I'm in community around the world. I'm Alexis Trujillo, and this is The NEM Show. Symbol is the next evolution of the NEM blockchain. If you want to have some Symbol tokens, or XYM, you must participate in the opt-in process. The opt-in is what every SEM account holder must follow to receive their XYM tokens on the Symbol public blockchain when it launches. Today, we'll talk to the chief of investment of the NEM Group, Dave Hutchin, about this process, how can we participate, and what can we expect from it. Yeah, that's the big thing in our ecosystem, the opt-in. And we have today in our show someone who has been speaking about that for a long time, and he can bring us a very simple explanation on how the opt-in works. I'm, I'm talking about Dave Hudson, our CIO at NGL, and also the head of NEM Ventures, and he's joining us to this The NEM Show episode. Hi, Dave. How are you? Good, Alexis. Thank you for having me. No, no, no. It's always, I'm always glad to, to, to have you, mate. And before we, we, we speak about the opt-in, uh, I know there's, there's, there are lots of people that asking themselves, what does a CIO does? And particularly on NGL. How's that? Yeah. So the, the acronym actually stands for two different jobs. One is chief information officer, which is more like a CTO role. Um, I don't have that one. My one means chief investment officer and um, basically means that I head up um, what we would call strategic partnerships or large partnerships. Um, and also where NGL may look to invest to make a specific difference either within the ecosystem or as a financial gain, etc. It obviously goes hand in hand with a lot of the work that Ventures does um, anyway already. Um, but yeah, it's essentially partnerships and looking at how best to invest money to have maximum impact rather than specifically looking at delivery. Most of that side of the role is going to come post launch. Up until launch, um, it's pretty much all hands to, to the pumps for whatever's needed. So right now I'm doing bits of the CTO role, bits of the partnership role, bits of running ventures and kind of anything in between. <laughs> and yeah, and, and it's also trendy, the thing with the up in, even though we've, we've spent a lot of time explaining that to our people, there's always someone who's not into the explanation yet. And you are, you've been our voice and, and you are one of our voices on the, on the ecosystem explaining that process to all of the people. Do you think you can summarize that in a dumb, uh, opt-in for dummies version? Yep, I would imagine I can do. So let's take a step back from opt-in directly. If somebody's coming in new to the ecosystem, Basically, what we have now is a chain that's been running for five and a half years and has a native token on it called XEM. Any holder of XEM is welcome to participate in a new product, a new platform that's launching called Symbol. That launches in December. And the way in which you signal your desire to take part, so you have the right to take part, but you need to tell us you want to take part, that process is the opt-in. So at a very simple level, there will be a new version of the mobile or the Symbol mobile wallet and the NEM desktop wallet, previously known as the Nano wallet. Both of those will support a normal user interface where effectively you sign in, you use your private keys to sign transactions on this one to say, I would like to receive simple tokens. And now that's all gonna be registered on chain. Um, so it's gonna be a message on the transaction on the NIS1 chain to say, you wanna take part. And then we will take an extract at what we've called the snapshot, which is just a given block height sometime before launch in early December. And any XEM that you hold in an account which has said, I want to take part, you'll be given those tokens on the symbol chain, the tokens called XYM, and then at launch in the Nemesis or the Genesis block and other chains, you'll be allocated those tokens. So it's not an airdrop, it's not a fork, it's, it's something kind of different um, where it's a token allocation or token distribution in block zero And you have to, the only way to receive those in block zero is to hold XEM at the snapshot date and have opted in to say you want them. 
And, and let me interrupt you there. Uh, th there's a quick question. If I have those SAMs in my wallet, is, is, does it matter if I have those vested or do I just have plain no. in, in my wallet? Just have to own them. So the vesting only applies on NIS1 and allows you to harvest. It's completely relevant to the opt-in process. A key fact there that if you have them in your wallet and you control the keys, under the usual crypto philosophy of not your keys, not your coins, you control the keys, you can choose whether you opt in. If you have the tokens with a third party, so for example, a custodial exchange or just a custodial service in general, then you need to speak to that third party to check that they are definitely supporting opt-in and that they will distribute the tokens. There's nothing that the NEM project can do in that regard. We will obviously publish the names of the exchanges and the custodians who are supporting it as they publish the fact that they're supporting it. But essentially, if they're in your wallet, you can choose to opt in. If they're in someone else's wallet, they will make that opt-in decision for you. Now, I would imagine most of the main exchanges which support XEM are likely to signal their intent to support that opt-in on the run-up to launch, uh, because obviously there are commercial considerations behind that for their customers. So. There, there are people in our, in our media asking us if that process is gonna make our ecosystem bigger. Uh, I usually answer them, of course, it's you know, once you have, maybe you can have one blockchain, but now you're gonna have two blockchains and you're gonna have to double of, of the users. How do you see that? Is our ecosystem yes. going to grow with that simple explanation or does it imply more things? Um, so I think that simple explanation is, is absolutely valid. There's a few other things that may not be immediately obvious. So the simple fact of launching the new platform and the right to participate in that new platform being tied to holding XEM um, is already, and we can see in the, the volume on car market cap, it's already increasing. Um, that is likely to draw in further volume and further token holders, which obviously will increase the ecosystem generally. Um, the second side is that not every project is intending to leave the NIS1 chain. It's been running for five and a half years. It, it works, it's a production grade chain that is perfectly functional as of today. And there will still be use cases going forward that will choose the NIS1 chain. I'm speaking to a couple of projects already who know Symbol is coming, don't need the extra functionality and are gonna use NIS1 largely because it's likely to end up cheaper, slightly lower transaction volume, that type of um, dynamic starts to come into play. And we have existing projects in the ecosystem, the likes of LuxTag, um, opening lineup in Japan, the, there's a stem cell project. They have historical data on the chain already that if they migrate it causes problems with immutability and verifiability, etc. So there are already early, early signals to say that there's gonna be adopters of either chain depending on what they what they need. Most of the enterprises are tending towards symbol at this stage because of the, the additional feature sets. But I think it definitely will amplify or widen the ecosystem both in terms of token holders and projects that are considering a given platform. But it is important to understand that they are two two production grade chains running in parallel. They're effectively two products out of the same project. Um, and we don't expect all of the value or all the transactions to move, although some of them naturally will fairly early on. And, and that's perfect for our ecosystem. That's, the, that's perfect for the community. But what's in it for the outsiders? What's in it for the business sector? We're now uh, creating a blockchain for, the, for business. And we have many features, okay? We have interoperability. What do you think that can help us to get to that sector? How do you think you, we, we can grab their attention and, and say, hey, here's Symbol and it works for you? Yeah, so we, um, you touched on it there with the interoperability, but natively in Symbol, we support two uh, deployment methods. You could either deploy it as a public chain or a private chain. And we also support the cross-chain swap between the two. So a lot of enterprises that we're speaking to today, they are looking predominantly for a private chain solution because of lack of trust for public chain, lack of desire to pay transaction fees, 
private data under data protection, all those kind of things come into play. And frankly, enterprises are more comfortable with centralized private solutions. And they don't always need to be decentralized for what an enterprise does. If Coca-Cola wants to track its supply chain, for example, it doesn't really have to care about that being centralized or decentralized. What they want to do is track their supply chain. Now, if I want to transfer value between two parties and I want to make sure I don't have to trust a middleman or a bank or a regulator or whatever, I need to consider that for it to be decentralized in the same way that I would do with XEM today. But for the purposes of an enterprise use case, it really doesn't make any difference. And if you listen to Anthony Welfare's recent um, presentation, I think it was at Reimagine, it was called. Okay, and, and I got to stop you there. It, it was brilliant, okay? Because that's what I was going to say. That's not the debate here, okay? If it's centralized or decentralized, it doesn't matter anymore. It's on, only, only for specific yeah. use cases. Okay, it, it matters, but it's not crucial in the discussion. Exactly, yeah. Okay. But what is crucial is that these guys who are using the private chain ones can abstract back up to the public chain when they want to. So if you're tracking, for example, a supply chain, having a private chain solution that requires you to have some VPN connection into a central data center while you're someone, I don't know, in a crop field in Sri Lanka, India, North America, it doesn't really matter where you're growing the crops. What you care about is being able to take a scan or a photograph or whatever it is you're submitting as evidence and have that reach the network. Now, doing that over complicated things like VPNs and security settings to get into central networks is hard. So if you can have that joining of both worlds, it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. This type of private public hybrid deployment model fits really well with the way that enterprises approach this space. And obviously, um, the team that we have in place to go into those conversations now. We've brought Anthony Welfare in, for example, who presented recently. He's the chief commercial officer for NEM Software. Prior to joining us, he was working for Luxsoft DX or DC as their global practice lead for enterprise. Prior to that, he was at Oracle as their innovation and strategy director around blockchain. The way he approaches that type of conversation and that type of sales cycle is obviously different to somebody with a crypto background or with a trading background or with a community focused background because he speaks the same language and he understands the same thought processes. Now I have some of that in my background as well, but he has it a significant wealth more than I do. Okay, David, uh, I can't say goodbye before asking you one, one quick question, but uh, of course not before inviting all of you guys of the Namek Assistant to subscribe to our channel and also to the rest of our social media where you can leave us your kind uh, comments and so on and of course telling telling us who do you want to bring to our show quick uh, quick question Dave uh, what can we expect from here to the final launch of symbol and what do you think we can expect after the launch yeah those are good questions so in the next 90 days approximately three months what we can expect is opt-in to open September the 15th and it's just going through final testing now I see no reason why it shouldn't hit that date we can expect the public test net of the final version that we expect to go into public chain to launch so right now we have test nets but they're of development versions effectively what we're looking for now is a 0.9.7 release which is the one that's going to go into testing to become version one for public chain that's going to include finality all the bug fixes to date, all the security reviews to date, et cetera. And that's due to land also mid-September. And again, is on track as far as I can tell. From there, we're gonna run a three month soak on that test net to make sure that we find any issues similar to the ones that ETH found, for example, on Medaya recently. Um, any of that kind of stuff gets flushed out when a chain's been running for a bit longer, it has more nodes on it, we see latency, how the nodes communicate, etc. And we also see what happens when we get into conflict situations within the consensus or when finalization breaks off into two chains, all that kind of stuff needs to run for some time to work it out. So we'll see that over three months. Some point towards the end of testnet, assuming that all goes smoothly and we don't need to reset or extend testnet because of some issues, then we will announce that opt-in is due to close. We will take a snapshot or at a given block height on this one for everyone who's opted in and then we'll launch symbol and the plan for that right now is mid-december and as far as i can see from the detail in the plan that i've got visibility of i don't see any risk at this stage to, the, to that date so i don't see any reason for that change whether that uh, that situation changes in three months i can't obviously guarantee but 
it looks pretty solid from where I'm looking now. In terms of what comes after, in block zero, everybody gets their X XYM tokens. Anybody who didn't manage to opt in can opt in for another six years after launch, and you'll be able to reclaim the tokens that you had at the time of the snapshot block in this one. Now, that doesn't mean after snapshot, you can go and buy a bunch of XEM and get a bunch of free XYM. We're going to take a cut at that date, and, and, and we will um, distribute or allocate those tokens through a special purpose vehicle to to the right, rightful holders or owners. Um, from there, we then start looking at what um, type of adoption people are using, what enterprises actually do with the chain in the wild. Obviously, right now, we can hypothesize, and we've spoken to a reasonable breadth of companies about what they want to do. But really, until it's in the wild and people actually start using it, we really don't know. So we will obviously get a bunch of product suggestions and feature set suggestions from that process. Um, and then we start to look at things like layer two enhancements. So whether that's an identity solution or a DEX or a cross-chain swap with ETH to allow people to access DeFi, for example. Um, obviously, you've seen recently that we had success with the central bank digital currency from Lithuania on this one. Those guys are also looking at a bit of a migration to Symbol. There are ongoing conversations with various different central banks in the industry in general about issuing digital currencies. So I'd imagine we'll see those kind of conversations come. And then I guess the final one that springs to mind is we will see the first security token issuance on Symbol shortly after launch. That's already committed in. So Wave Financial have already um, committed to the fact that they're going to launch their Whiskey Fund and tokenize that on Symbol. The work to integrate Symbol into a security token issuance platform is now well advanced. We're probably about 95% complete. So I would imagine once the first one launches, there's obviously going to be more interest from um, further security token platforms and, and issuers. So uh, yeah, it's going to be busy from here to the end of the year. And then I think it's going to keep on being busy next year. <laughs> Well, busy agenda for a very busy blockchain. Thank you, Dave. Quick one. Any final thoughts for the community? Yeah, basically, uh, we have a new initiative called NEMHUB, which most people will be aware of in our community, but outside of our community. Um, it allows community members to interact with each other, upvote and downvote contributions towards the community. It's not controlled by NGL in any way. It's entirely autonomously run by the community. We just happen to provide the, the reward funding that gets given at the end of each month to users. So I would actively encourage anyone in the community to get involved with that platform. It's a really good way of interacting with the rest of the NEM community. And we're now up into the thousands of users that are registered on that. So as we start to grow through the, through the next two or three months where the volume picks up and where the awareness and the hype and the marketing and everything starts to kick in, the NEM Community Hub is a really good way of connecting into that, being rewarded for the activities by other community members. And there will be special tasks put up there from time to time by NGL. So we've seen, obviously, the testnet, the simple testnet node one recently. There's now a bit of assistance with testing the desktop wallet, for example. And I would imagine that Dan Bobby's got a bunch of nice surprises there that I wouldn't want to ruin the, uh, the surprise effect on. NEM Hub is a great thing. It's our community on a 2.0 format, okay? Please join. It's easy to do all the tasks. It's a very friendly environment. Please join, okay? Well, thank you, Dave Hudson, for your time with us on the NEM show. I hope to see you soon again. And of course, I'm gonna, you have to be soon again with, any, with more news about what's to come to our ecosystem. Absolutely. My name is Alexis Trujillo. Thanks for having me, Alexis. No, 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 no. Thank you for, for coming, man. Okay. My name is Alexis Trujillo. See you on the next episode of The Nem Show. Bye-bye, Dave. Thanks, sir.